This circuit uses 2N222A transistors configured as negative resistors. A primary full wave rectifier pulls in various ambient energy spikes, such as RF, magnetic, and even earth currents. It is very important to use a large capacitor antenna, such as a large metal sphere, up as high as you can in the air. The antenna capacitor must not be earth grounded. Use coax as an electric capacitor feed line. Short out the coax at the top that connects to the capacitor antenna. The electric properties of the coax will greatly enhance the effect of collecting energy. AC ground must be a real earth ground such as a cold water pipe. This circuit will fail to work without a proper ground at the proper location. The first rectifier in this circuit can get peaks of 12 volts DC without connecting to a charging capacitor. This circuit has enough self-capacitive properties that after a few moments, a DC bias is formed and negative resistance AC amplifier properties kick in within the rectifier sections of this circuit. Transistors also have some capacitor properties alongside with this breadboard. Capacitor 1 is charged up to the trigger voltage it takes to turn on switching transistor 2N222A. This pulses the DC output voltage of rectifier 2 into L1 coil. The secondary side gets a pulse DC square wave output. For whatever usage you may have, it is 100% powered by the ambient. My observations. I'm not sure why, but shorting out the electret works. It seems to. Antennas can be anything conductive, large up in the air, as high as you can, that is not grounded. HF antennas work well if you make sure the radiator element is not shorted to ground. Regular antennas may need some minor modifications to be compatible, but should work fine. AC ground must be a real earth ground. I tried with very bad results trying to use a counterpoise wire around the house. And of course, speeding up or slowing down the DC pulses depends on the time it takes to charge up the trigger capacitor. So varying that value should also vary the frequency of the square wave generated. Here is an ambient power amplifier based on negative resistance using transistors negative resistance properties something you don't usually do but I decided to do basically configuring the transistors as full bridge uh, diodes and I have a big basically antenna acting as a capacitor outside isolated from ground and I'm connecting it to the coax here on one side and on the negative side I simply have this wire here go into the cold water pipe if you absolutely want to see it's down here taped into the water pipe so with that said here it is right there so these are my two stages first stage is right here is this is the first rectifier right here right there and this is the second rectifier so the first rectifier gets the power from the uh, basically capacitor antenna would work better with an uh, electret kind of antenna but I'm sure the electret properties of the coax is helping out as well so this is acting as a negative resistance AC amplifier as well uh, because they exhibit negative resistance properties and its AC signals coming into this system now this rectifier here rectifies to DC here then I have my capacitor right here and this capacitor slowly charges to a few volts and once a couple of volts about I don't at the threshold whatever the minimum is for this 2N222A transistor it's configured as a simple switch triggers the second here this is the second rectifier circuit basically doing the same thing but isolated on it's producing its own power but what that's doing is it's chopping it now so I have, it's basically an oscillator because it's acting as a simple, basically a square wave generator powered by its own source of energy. Well, the ambient basically with the help of the negative resistance amplifier properties. So zooming a little bit out of here, I just have my, uh, my uh, oscope here. 
running on the um, oscillator side, the 2N222A two 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 that I just showed you, and basically a square wave. Now I'm sure I could change the frequency, but this is very crude because I just have the capacitor here. So a bigger capacitor obviously would mean longer charge time, which would slow down the pulses if I really want to change this. So, um, I just made some notes here, you probably won't know. I'm not very good with schematics yet, so I'm just making little notes for myself. So basically what I'm trying to show here is, for my own use, there's the capacitive antenna going into the negative resistance full bridge rectifier here. There's my ground giving me a DC out. Cut quite high voltage. I uh, on another project I measured peaks of up to 12 volts, but I couldn't do much with them. This charges the capacitor I showed you here, and this goes to a switching the 2N222A here, which switches the second um, negative resistance full bridge rectifier, also with the capacitive antenna here set up. And this is the next stage I want to do, feed it to L1 and L2 so the pulses will either step up or step down to whatever it is I want to do. And then a regular uh, DC rectifier and I'm hoping, you know, this is just a hope right now into the 3 volts ish 100 MA range, which maybe I'm dreaming, I don't know yet, but this is just kind of like mind boggling and this is what I came up with. So. The next step would be to um, feed these pulses into a step-up or step-down transformer to do more interesting things with it. So what's very interesting here is, um, this is the setup here, the two uh, transistor negative resistance rectifiers. And here's my little oscillator here, which is basically triggered by the capacitor charging going on off on off producing my square waves here as you can see on the scope so this is very interesting and the scope is connected right here on the second bar here which I have if you're wondering what these LEDs are it's just because I'm using one side to probe into the breadboard because my wires a little um, they're not very hard and it's difficult so it's just easier for my alligator clips for connection points because at one point I had the analog meter here, it's not connected right now. But uh, because uh, the digital meter here, it's disconnected. Kind of goes bonkers, you know, with oscillators and ugh. That's the wonder with digitals. So i rather try with analog. So this is it. I hope you enjoy. So again, yes, one of my many projects, again, that proved that there is free energy out there. and. There might be a lot of it, especially when I'm reading peaks of 12 volts here. Here is what I was talking about, the pulses in slow motion now on the scope, square waves. That's a result of the capacity here charging enough to trigger the transistor here as a switch for the um, second rectifier circuit basically